morning. Hello, Valley Church. My name is Mark. Uh, welcome to our online church. I uh, hope everyone is doing well and you had a great 4th of July. So last week, Maddie taught in Matthew 7, uh, 7 through 12, about ask, seek, knock, and the golden rule. She did an amazing job with some really uh, practical and relevant application points that are probably going to hit home with a lot of us uh, right now. So go and listen to it. If you haven't yet, it's worth your time. Uh, this week, we're going through our Matthew series uh, and continuing on in verses 13 through 14 about the narrow and wide gate. So currently, we're living in this time of COVID-19. Uh, the past few months has revealed some things about myself, spiritually, physically, emotionally, uh, relationally. So when normal church on Sundays had to be canceled, it was difficult to be a part of a community. I had to figure out new rhythms to follow Jesus. All that stuff was really difficult and hard. I think everyone knew things would be different, but not how difficult that they would actually be. And what I learned about myself, maybe reaffirmed <laughs> about myself, is that I want things to be easy, and I want to avoid what is difficult. And maybe this is the same for you, but... I think uh, a lot of us, well, at least for myself, I buy certain things because they're easier to use than other things. And I celebrate when things are easier than I thought they would actually be. So easy is good and difficult is bad. So I think Jesus knows that about all of us, especially when it comes to following him. It's easy just to listen to a teaching or a podcast and feel inspired but not do anything about it because allowing the Spirit to transform our hearts sometimes can be difficult. Or back when we were in church to hear a worship song but not actually engage with it uh, in our mind or in our heart, it's simply easier not to engage. It's probably the same during Jesus' time. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount started in Matthew chapter 5 and is now about to come to a close uh, with the end of chapter 7 here. And Jesus wants to prepare his listeners. Jesus is teaching to his disciples, to the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, and to a crowd of people. And all these uh, teachings that Jesus was uh, saying to everyone demand a response. And the response is not going to be easy. In fact, it's going to be difficult. So let's read this verse together and dive into what it means, knowing that what Jesus has to say might sound difficult. So it says in Matthew 7, 13 through 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. So we have two verses brimming with a lot of stuff. So the main subject of the two verses are these two gates and ways and where they lead. Jesus is using this simple picture for everyone. Uh, everyone during the day would have known what these gates that enter cities look like. Some were varying sizes. So we have this... Uh, narrow and wide gate. So let's compare these two real quick. So we have the wide. Now, obviously, wide gates, you don't have to do too much to get inside them. If there's a lot of people, you just walk straight in, which means that they're comfortable and easy. A lot of people, like I said, can go through large carts, all that type of stuff, and you can bring a lot of things with you through these wide gates. And they were popular. So this road uh, kind of implies that nobody's going to uh, think twice that you went through this road. You're going to have people's approval, and a lot of other people are walking on this path with you. And also, it's easy to find. Everyone can see this is like the main highway I-5 type thing. But the wide path leads to destruction. So that's the wide path. Okay, so we got the narrow path. It's uncomfortable and difficult. That's kind of what is implied by narrow. Narrower hallways, pathways, harder to walk through. Sometimes you got to like shimmy through or uh, kind of like bend in different ways to get through the gate. They don't allow you to take a lot of things with you. So like the image here is the small gate where maybe you couldn't even fit 
a, a like a camel or a donkey carrying a large load. Uh, all you could do was walk through it on your own. And because of that, this is unpopular. Not a lot of people are using this path. Uh, and maybe you would be looked down upon because you are using that path. And because of its size, because of how small it is, it's hard to find. But this path leads to life. So Jesus lays it out that the narrow path is not easy to follow, but commands us to go down it. The language there is an imperative like, you must go down this path. And he also says that it will be difficult. But why is it difficult? In Romans 5, 3 through 5, it says, We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Endurance, character, and hope, these things come through uncomfortable and difficult situations. They don't come from easy and comfortable uh, situations that happen to us. I think back to uh, some of the situations in my life that I've grown the most, and uh, my character has uh, improved, and that has come through these difficult seasons and situations in my life. It is difficult also because there's not many people going down the same path. Uh, growing up, I, being Japanese, I was different than a lot of people. I know that feeling of feeling different and not fitting in with other people. And that is a difficult situation to find yourself in as a believer going down a path where not many other people are going down. John Calvin says this, the small numbers of the faithful make many cowards, for it is hard to induce us to renounce the world and to pattern our life upon the ways of a few. Simply, it's scary being alone, being lonely walking down this path. We are told by Jesus that we will face persecution as followers also. In other parts of the Bible, it's not easy to be made fun of. It's not easy to have your beliefs mocked. The gate and the way are not easy. So to those who choose Jesus, there is life. And to those who do not, there is destruction. Now you might be thinking, isn't that a little too much fire and brimstone? But I think it's actually the perfect amount. It would be wrong for us to skip over it. We aren't doing ourselves any favors or anyone else by skipping over it. So with these two verses, I believe there should be this holy feeling of uncomfortability that prompts some wrestling over the scripture and through prayer with the Lord, uh, contemplating what, what Jesus is actually talking about here, about life or destruction. It's heavy. If I'm honest, it's very heavy. And I believe that Jesus wants us to feel the weight of that. Leon Morris, a New Testament scholar says, Jesus makes it clear that there are two ways in life and two ways only that are set before all people. It is thus important that the right choice be made. R.T. France says, this is not a matter of more and less successful attempts to follow the lifestyle of the kingdom of heaven, but of being either in or out, saved or lost. The two routes lead in opposite directions and their destinations are totally apart. Without using those words, this saying sets us before the radical alternative of heaven or hell. Like Jesus said, the entrance to the gate is narrow and it would be impossible and the way impassable, but Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It is only through Jesus. Jesus carries that weight, that heaviness uh, with us. He died for us on the cross and promised that he would always, always be with us and that we would have the Holy Spirit through all of our days. Michael J. Wilkins says, Jesus offers by grace this invitation to life. He is the narrow gate through whom we must enter the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Like the gate, the road is as narrow as Jesus himself, indicating the life of discipleship on which one embarks after entering the gate. And I love that. Jesus is the gate. He is the way. And he is uh, the means to which we can actually walk down this path. 
he gives us that strength. So as I read these verses and I look through this passage, uh, man, this is an invitation, but also a warning. Take the narrow gate. Jesus is there. He, he says, choose me and be my disciple. You can choose this path or that path. And if you choose a narrow path, it will be tough. He doesn't, he doesn't want to lie and say that it was, it's going to be easy, but it will be tough. And there might not be a lot of people traveling with you, but this path will lead to life. Don't go down the wide path that leads to destruction. So for us today, maybe you know you are, you're on the path to destruction. If you have not gone through the narrow gate, it's never too late. It's never too late to choose Jesus. It is through Jesus that we're able to walk through that narrow path, get in contact with us, uh, email us, text us, uh, use the, the prayer request. We'd love to get in contact with you about how to make Jesus Lord. That is what we're all about, helping people take the next step. And maybe today you feel discouraged because following Jesus is tough. It's difficult. My encouragement to you is don't settle for easy. Don't settle for others' approval. Choose Jesus. Life abundant, right relationships, everlasting peace, endless mercy. Uh, man, the hope that Jesus brings, that's a, that's a road that is worth walking on, even though it might be difficult. Every step that we take down this path also could inspire someone else to take their next step towards life. So in a recent community, there was this guy uh, who admittedly was bad at doing silence and solitude, which was a recent practice of ours. And he bought the book Emotionally Healthy Day by Day, which is a, a way to help you do silence and solitude. And he actually bought the book, and he was explaining to the group how it was slowly beginning to change his life. And before like 10 minutes have passed, two of the other people in our group went online and bought day by day and are planning on uh, reading through it and allowing that to help them through their silence and solitude. And it all happened because this person took steps down the difficult way. We can't make people walk through the narrow gate or walk down this path, but man, surely we, we can be uh, the light and help people walk down it through our example. That means maybe exhibiting some of the fruits of the Spirit or exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are things that a lot of us, uh, man, when we look at our country and social media, those things are not present. As followers of Jesus, as, as people who are walking down this difficult way, that sounds like a hard task, but I believe that Jesus wants us to exhibit these things and be a light to the world. Next week, as we reopen Valley Church to in-person gatherings, I also want to encourage you to, to come and be a part of the gathering. COVID-19 may have made us feel a little lonelier than we have ever felt before. Um, but man, let's get back together to be an encouragement to one another. Uh, we mutually push each other forward when we see each other being discipled by Jesus. So Valley Church, man, there are two paths, the wide and the narrow. And my encouragement is for you to, to pray through this, uh, to meditate on this, and to allow Jesus to really speak to you through this. So we're going to go and we're going to worship with one more song, but we love you, we miss you, and we're very excited to meet together again very soon. Mm -hmm.